All right, guys, uh, back again. Um, this will be part three. Right, so since I last talked to you, um, let me think, so where am I? I contacted Netpol, uh, who were um, help activists. Um, they um, did not get back to me, um, so I waited four days. And I was hoping they'd get back to me and say, yeah, we can help you. Um, but uh, they didn't. Um, so, you know, why am I actually leaving? I think I'll, I'll just go on to that. Um, obviously, mentioned about legal aid um, and the fact that uh, well, you, I'm just not going to get any legal support to, uh, to help me. Uh, I'm not even sure that there is a legal framework to protect uh, people like myself and you uh, from well, basically from uh, from being hacked and stacked. Um, so I, I think you know at the end of the day, guys. Uh, you know we're looking at Snowden. I mean, actually, the amount of whistleblowers coming out of America is, is, is loads, and they're all saying kind of the same thing. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, there's other people saying, well, you know, if you don't have anything to hide, you don't have any problem. Um, well, that's not necessarily true, because in 1980s, there was a blacklisting system set up, um, and lots of people got on it who didn't deserve to be on it. Like, like they were uh, sitting, one guy was sitting uh, um, uh, near Trafalgar Square, uh, waiting for someone to turn up, and a, a parade goes by, um, and it, somehow uh, they got a photograph of him. This is, this is in the 80s. They got a photograph of him and identified him from the photograph uh, in the 1980s well before computer stuff and uh, so he basically uh, he basically went for a job at telecom which is what his job was uh, and they said no sorry um, and uh, and of course there was lots of other issues and there was books brought up uh, about this blacklisting uh, issues raised um, basically they raised the issues and uh, I mean basically it was it was very unfair and uh, the, the legal uh, sort of uh, mechanism came in and started protecting people and um, and that was good we thought uh, but it's highly likely that the blacklisting system carried on in one way or other especially in telecoms uh, and various other sensitive areas but but you know in other areas it, it wasn't an issue however now it's just totally different you know um, because the computer system basically links everything together now if a company wants to find out if i am uh, an upstanding citizen or or a, a troublemaker uh, or a criminal um, they can basically access um, uh, private security companies who likely are able to access this prism i mean there's a hell of a lot of people have access to this, uh, this very secret prism and that's why there's so many people coming out saying look hey i work for this lot they're completely you know it's not right this is really dodgy and everybody's sort of ignoring it and the press are saying well we're not going to touch this with a barge pole because we'll get sued um and we'll just uh, keep our heads down um and, and they have no choice. Uh, I mean, you know, after uh, initially, I I think the first uh, intercept with me was because they thought I was some sort of journalist, maybe uh, the police, someone about the first hack I had, or the intercept. Um, and and it kind of made me think afterwards what 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 the journalists get when they, when they do their you know professional digging on stories and do they get uh, phone calls and cars waiting outside and speeding off when they come out and all that type of stuff uh, um, or, or they just get a phone call saying stop it you know direct phone call um, so it's hard to say it really is um, but uh, but we know these things do go on and I definitely know these things go on um, and then you know if you're a journalist though what as, as I've explained I've talked to journalists that they're, they're kind of worried about their mortgages and things because you know they can lose their jobs and you know the security and, and they can be attacked in so many different ways because they're connected uh, financially in so many different ways. Um, so, you know, there's just no way that, that even if a paper was going to print the story, that, that, that uh, then the, 
uh, sort of news uh, journalist himself would be uh, targeted. And, and we had that guy recently in America who, who had the car accident, uh, you know, and, and it sounded to me like, you know, there's a text where, you know, the FBI are watching him and then next minute he's uh, having a high speed accident uh, on the roads, um, you know, and, and we kind of think of, you know, immediately I just thought of, uh, what's her name, uh, Princess Diana, and uh, the fact that she was, you know, I'm not into the conspiracy stuff here, but, but, but she was running away, they were running away from the journalists who were following, um, you know, take, taking the pictures when, when they crashed those guys. Um, now, you know, that, that they weren't, you know, I'm not going to go into the details and uh, people have looked into it a lot more in depth than I, but, you know, from my perspective, the guy was booting it along because he was trying to just uh, maintain some privacy for these two, uh, this couple, and, uh, and then, you, you know, there were all these guys on bikes uh, chasing them at high speed, uh, was bound to cause an accident. Um, and, and it's very likely that the surveillance would be the same thing. You get a young man uh, who's kind of worried about his situation and uh, you know he's going to try and get away more like he's trying to you know sort of be, be uh, uh, you get the old uh, adrenaline going but uh, the bottom line is though is that um, journalists get targeted so that means everybody else doesn't get to hear squat diddly about anything important Ex unless you go to the blogs and um, I would say in the last six months the blogs have been attacked you know uh, I think there was problems before uh, but for instance, I've just put an article up on Nuclear News. I I went onto Google down to the hour, typed in the word nuclear, and and the story I put up uh, hadn't registered. Now normally it does. Normally I get you know, that's one thing I loved about NuclearNews.net. You could put an article up, uh, do a search, and it would be there. Uh, well, um, I did searches uh, and I couldn't find Nuclear News, nor could I find any news uh, or. Uh, um, there was only one or two uh, sort of alternative blogs. So, so now actually, if you want to try and find the uh, the places where you're going to get the links that are going to give you the information, um, basically you're not going to be able to find them, uh, not unless you know their names. So, uh, and even then there may be problems uh, depending on what country, um, because I know somebody who typed in nuclearnews.net in Norway and they, they couldn't find it. <laughs> so. Um, uh, and, and then we're looking at Prism and the Google search. So you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, you know, it's kind of uh, well, that's worrying, isn't it? Um, so the, the the information can be manipulated through Google, and we all kind of suspected that. But now, you know, as I said, I'm I'm looking for for nuclear news stories, and I cannot find it. The only way we get hits is basically from our subscribers and from uh, other blogs. Um, so. Uh, you know, at the moment today, for instance, any news is one of our biggest, um, and that's because I put a post on there and some people are going, ah, that's interesting. Um, but uh, coming in from the search, no, nah, not much. Um, and, uh, you know, it's basically, I, I think at the end of the day, um, that's the kind of situation we find ourselves in at the moment. It makes it very difficult for you guys to find real information. And I'll put three stories up just now that uh, that, that weren't, fi weren't found. Um, and uh, what's what, what they're doing also, the uh, corporations, uh, the media, is that they're putting up stories of the word nuclear in uh, the same story in a uh, hundred different uh, newspapers. So, you know, basically you have a hundred uh, things with the word nuclear, all at the same, all the same article, word, word for word, cut and paste. Um, and that kind of hides the nuclear stuff. Um, I actually had to find the nuclear stuff by using other keywords. <laughs> so um, anyway, so that's interesting. And I suppose there'd be this game of uh, chase the keyword and then put a block on it. Um, right, well, I'm going to leave this uh, pretty much here. Um, except to say, you know, I contacted Netpol, tried the legal route. It's not going to work. Uh, it kind of uh, limits my options. Uh, the only other thing, and the main thing that stops me at the moment, is that when I leave here, uh, technically I won't be insured. Um, so basically I'll have uh, a period of time to, uh, uh, well, if I have an accident, basically I won't be insured. They'll say, you don't have a home address. Um, 
and the insurance are aware, you know, because I was obviously trying to get a living insurance for a vehicle, uh, and they said no, no. Um, so, uh, and, and basically, I, I, you know, my motorcycle insurance when I drive away from here um, is technically invalid because I will technically have no, no home. Uh, it's very odd. Uh, now, if I was to, if anybody was kind enough to allow me an address to use, uh, I would have to give the insurance that the address and the insurance are the ones that are targeting me. You know, giving me phone calls and saying we're gonna we're gonna if you get any more than three points we're pulling your courier policy um, uh, first of all they said uh, I had a tiny little accident with very low costs and they go right we're gonna pull your uh, no claims bonus and then I say I, I've got protection for my no claims bonus and then they say oh have you and then about a week later they phone up deny that phone call ever happened say all the same questions again, I answer them again, and they finish it off with, just wait till you, uh, your, uh, uh, what's it, your uh, policy's up in December, you know, we're gonna charge you for, you know, we're gonna put it up. Uh, and I'm like, what? And that was the end of that call. Um, that was this, as I say, it was about six weeks ago, I got these two calls. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's not a good, good thing. <laughs> Um, so I don't really want to pass that on to other people because everybody has insurances uh, to start off with uh, and it's not just the insurance because it's the people that are uh, asking the insurance or, or maybe even phoning me up instead of the insurance I have no idea what those two phone calls who they were from they're, they're, they don't seem to be taking notes and they weren't aware I had no claims bonus which if they were insurance underwriters they'd have the computer in front of them I don't know Anyway, so um, anyway, so I'm suspicious and uh, of that. But you know, bottom line is is that uh, I'm being pinned down to the ground here. Uh, the whole last week, uh, my phone goes off. I'm getting lots of calls from Microsoft for some reason. I, I don't even have a Microsoft uh, computer, um, and I'm also getting calls where I pick it up and it's dead, and then I go, uh, then it just says thank you, and then cuts off. <laughs> Um, I've got that one, one a day, one of those, one a day. Um, and then some other phone calls. Um, I've rounded up all my finances. Now I was trying to get a voluntary agreement sorted out in the next month or so. And uh, what happened then is that one of them, one of the creditors, has decided that they're not going to accept um, uh, that, that kind of deal. They, they want them, well, they don't want the money now, they're not saying that, but they've just started sending all the paperwork through and you know, even though I've made a, a vocal arrangement with them. Um, so, you know, uh, it sounds to me like they're going to be using the finance, the bank finance stuff uh, to target me as well. Um, and, and the phone, which is still working at the moment. Um, so basically, uh, I'm just that it's being used to harass me. Early morning calls, calls all through the day, uh, that kind of thing. All right, so... Uh, yeah, I'm kind of running out of options, so it, it does look like I'm just about coming to my end of my time in the UK. Um, uh, but I am trying still. I've got, got some little things in the fire, but um, but the things are getting much, much thinner now. Uh, yeah, it's very odd. Um, so it does look like I'll be, um, you know, one of my next videos will be uh, Goodbye Dover. All right, all right, take care, and I'll talk to you soon.